On today's show, is the Boston Celtics starting five the best starting five in the NBA? How have they been able to be so dominant through about a quarter way of this NBA season? Plus, we'll take a look at the Eastern Conference in-season tournament lineup, standings, predictions, storylines, and so much more. It's all coming up right here at Locked On NBA. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the offers stay hot on FanDuel because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action right now. Let me take a look at the money line betting options for the first ever NBA in-season tournament. We could take a look at the Boston Celtics who are currently minus 200 favorites on the road against the Indiana Pacers. And then the Sacramento Kings, minus 178 favorites at home against the New Orleans Pelicans. And then elsewhere for the Tuesday night bracket, we've got the Milwaukee Bucks, minus 200 favorites against the New York Knicks. And then the LA Lakers, minus 130 favorites against the Phoenix Suns, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and company. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So be sure to go check out FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started this season FanDuel official partners of the NFL joining us now is the host of locked on Celtics John Corrales you can track down wherever you listen to your podcast or on YouTube just search locked on Celtics and John we're going to talk a little bit about the NBA's in-season tournament here with the Celtics set to face the Indiana Pacers but first I want to you know kind of catch up a little bit here with our audience about where the Celtics team is at because they've been honestly pretty dominant. I know there were some questions about how this Celtics starting five unit would look about the decision to kind of bring Al Horford off the bench rather than keep him in that starting five, the whole Al Horford versus Derek White debate, all of that. And, and so far, I think it, is it, is it a stretch to say the Celtics have been the most dominant set of starters in the NBA when they play together? Because the numbers kind of back that up. When they, when the starting unit is whole and you can bring Horford off the bench uh, that that unit has been really, really, really good. Um, and, you know, you, you you start to see, and especially recently, guys coming around like Jalen Brown has started to really kind of s- get his full playmaking uh, capabilities, you know, put those on display. Uh, he's developed this chemistry with Kristaps Porzingis that's just been kind of amazing actually and it, it's kind of unlocked something for both those guys to the point where I'm like never sit one of those guys without like those guys have to be on the floor for like, like anchor forever, them to each ever, other, basically ever. like just their minutes should be exactly the same from now on <laughs> uh that's how good it's been and you know Tatum he's been sick recently and he's kind of like dropped a little bit efficiently but he's Jason Tatum uh Derek White is so good Drew Holiday is such a good defender uh, and, and so it, the, the, the best thing I can say about the Celtics is that starting unit has been dominant overall. They have the best net rating in the NBA and I can easily point to probably like four or five things where I could say, these guys still need to get better at these things. And if they do, they'll, they'll get even better. So, uh, I think, I think this has been a great start to the season, obviously, uh, and that starting unit has has done really well, even as they're trying to figure each other out. A plus twenty seven. So the starting lineup for the Celtics. So so Drew Holiday, um, uh, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Kristaps Porzingis. A plus twenty seven net rating in one hundred and ninety one minutes played together. That is obscene <laughs> levels of dominance when you look at how good those five guys have been when they're on the floor against any other five like they're they're dominating when they're out on the court maybe this might be one of the four or five things you could point to john here but one of the things that kind of stood out to me when i was looking into some of the numbers for the celtics team they've actually dropped off a little bit efficiency wise offensively Mm -hmm. from being number two in the nba last season they're down to number nine through the early going of this season is there anything that stands out in particular offensively as to why they've maybe regressed a little bit on that side i think some of it's their shooting the shooting has not been where it needs to be they're they're 
it, the shooting is so off that their free throw percentage is like weirdly down. Uh, I, I, I it's think that it's, yeah, it's just kind of weird. Um, I, I think that, and th- we've seen, like, like I said, Porzingis has been out. Uh, Derek White missed a couple of games because his, you know, he just had a new baby. Uh, uh, Tatum has been sick. Uh, and, and they've had, they've had a, a pretty kind of intense schedule over the past, you know, the, like over, over November, like lots of road games. They had a, a weird stretch where they had one home game mixed into like six road games. So it was almost like another stop on the road trip. So I, I think there's like some just fatigue that was built into this. They had a, a couple of weeks with three games and four nights. And so I, I think as things level out, as the Celtics get like these couple of days off here and there, the efficiency, the offensive efficiency will bounce back a bit. And, and you know, once Porzingis gets back, that'll help a lot too. They've also, they're now one of only two teams remaining in the NBA that are undefeated uh, at home. Them and the uh, reigning champion Denver Nuggets, both 9-0 and currently defending home court. Is there any secret to, to what their success has been to be able to defend home court at such an elite level so far this year? No, you know what? It's, it's, I think their, their mentality, their perseverance has been part of that because they've had some dominant games at home, but they've had like uh, uh, some tough games at home. Uh, they just played a tough game at home where it felt like against the the Sixers with no Embiid, no Maxi, no Batum. Like they're, they're like half their team is was missing. And okay, they played down to the competition a bit. Philly got hot. Philly got confident. And the Celtics just kind of they've they've had a few games where last year we'd say, oh, they would have lost that game, right? This year they're pulling those games out. So I guess, I guess the answer is if, if there's a secret, it's, it, it is perseverance. It is uh, a mentality of sticking with it, even when your energy is not where it's supposed to be. The, the shots aren't falling the way they used to be. Uh, those kind of things they're they're pulling through at the end of some of these tough games, like maybe not so much the Charlotte game. There are a couple of games here and there uh, where, where they didn't, but, most of these games, even when they haven't played their best, they're finding ways at the end to pull through. And I think I think some of that is the mentality. And some of it is also like they've just got so many good players that one of them is going to figure it out down the stretch. Derek White will make a play. Somebody's going to make a play that, that changes the game. Al Horford uh, in that Philly game with a, a monster block against uh, Tobias Harris. That, that, that play was just ridiculous. They find those moments in these games where they they make a play like that, and it kind of turns the game around, and they've won a few games that maybe they would have lost last year. Well, right around the corner, hopefully a game for for Celtics fans where they don't play down to the level of their competition, potentially here with the quarterfinals of the NBA in-season tournament. They're set to take on the Indiana Pacers and they will be without Kristaps Porzingis, who is out with the calf injury. And then the Pacers might be missing Tyrese Halliburton and Obi Toppin, who are both listed as questionable for this game, which I know Adam Silver can't be happy about in the first ever iteration of the in-season tournament. Yeah. You've got a bunch of important key players on both sides missing that possibly missing this game. Yeah, I know that would be tough. That uh, Porzingis, I think Porzingis is going to be fine. Like he might be back for Vegas if they make it. So he'll be okay, man. It's going to suck if Tyrese Halliburton misses. This yeah. is such a big thing. He's been playing so incredibly well. He's been sensational. Man. I mean, just unbelievable. And that Pacers offense is unbelievable for it. If they, in the first in season quarterfinal game, they can't put their best foot forward and, you know, that th- that could be a showcase game for Halliburton. Obviously, I think the Celtics could still win, but you know, you you gotta have to hold the Pacers to like a good defensive game against the Pacers is holding them to 120. So you like you're gonna have to really work hard. Uh, but it would be a shame if Tyrese doesn't get that kind of spotlight because he has deserved every second in the spotlight that he's gotten. Um it would be a shame. And the last time the Celtics played the Pacers and Halliburton didn't play. It was like a 50 point blowout that like nothing went right for Indiana. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be a motivating factor for them against the Celtics. But if there's no, if there's no Halliburton, if there's no, will be topping that, that I think the Celtics can, can, 
pull that game out. They should pull that game out regardless of Porzingis or no Porzingis. And, and it's it's a cool opportunity, right? The NBA in season tournament, like I'm bought into it. It sounds it it looks fun. That we're yeah. past the knockout stage now. We're to where it's th- starting. Things are starting to ramp up. We're you know right away from from Vegas starting December seventh when we get the Vegas games and we'll have all the you know the the hubbub going around with that. And it's a cool opportunity for like a small market team like the Pacers to like take that step forward and and put yeah. Tyrese Halliburton on a bigger stage and be like, hey, like look, people recognize what he's doing here. Let's take briefly. We'll go over to the other side of the bracket really quick here, John. Uh, the Bucks and the Knicks on the other side of the Eastern Conference bracket. Yeah. Give me a prediction for how you think that game ends up. You know that that's always a tough one, and I I I still think the Bucks are kind of figuring themselves out to a degree. I, that I think that's going to be like a a real tough tough match. Like obviously, you look at the Bucks and say, "Well, yeah, Giannis and Damon and, and all of that." Like they they should win that game, but I don't know, man. I think the Knicks. This is something important. I think for teams like New York, um, Orlando, Indy, like these other teams that that want to kind of show something to some degree, be like, "Hey, everybody, look at us." we're legit here. This is winning, winning this tournament might not mean like, it's not like they're winning a championship. No one's going to hang a banner for it, but it does send a little bit of a message like, Hey, by the way, we are winning this tournament here. Uh, We want to let you guys know we're for real. So I think I'm going to go with the Knicks. I think the Knicks are going to, I think they can beat the bucks. I think, I I think Celtics, I think it's gonna be Celtics Knicks playing for that that Eastern Conference semifinal. I think that and, and that that'll be fun. Okay. I, I like the Knicks here too. I think that, you know, for, for all the reasons you listen, it just kind of feels like they've got with the Bucks side of thing. I think they're still trying to figure things out, right? Dame and Giannis are still trying to work on their chemistry. They haven't quite gotten everything figured out just yet. So it's going to be a fun. It should be a fun slate of, ga- slate of games. Here's hoping that Tyrese Halliburton can play so that we have the most exciting game possible, even if it doesn't necessarily mean uh, doesn't necessarily bode the well do- bode best for the Celtics. If Tyrese Halliburton is out there on the court, but can the Celtics starters continue to die? dominate the NBA landscape this season. How far will the Celtics find themselves in the first ever, the inaugural NBA in-season tournament? Y'all have us covered for all that and more over at Locked On Celtics. John, thanks for stopping by Locked On NBA with me. You got it, man. Anytime.